Hello everyone and welcome to this repair video. This is going to be the valve adjust on a 2003 Yamaha Raptor 660R. The first step in this process is going to be to remove the front plastics as well as the fuel tank. All that comes out pretty easy, just a couple of basic hand tools I'm using the power tool because it's easier. Then we're going to remove this intake valve access cover here on the back. There's four bolts to take out. I'm using a 5mm RBRT hex bit to remove these bolts. They're not crazy tight, but I like the RBRT because it guarantees that you're not gonna round one of these bolts out. So four bolts come out and then this cover comes loose. Sometimes you're gonna need a little screwdriver to pop the side of the cover up. Once that cover comes out, be sure you pull this rubber gasket here and don't lose that. The next step is going to be to remove these two covers using a flathead screwdriver. You're going to fit a 19 millimeter socket into the hex in the big hole, and then you're gonna line up the timing mark in the small hole. The timing mark is a straight line that lines up with this groove in the threads and that time mark. So just turn it until it lines up. Always turn the motor counterclockwise only. Once you're lined up, top dead center on compression stroke, take a 45 degree feeler gauge like this one and slip it in between the top of the valve and the end of that rock arm. If it doesn't fit, you're gonna to need to adjust it. To adjust it, simply take a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen the adjusting nut at the top. Once the nut, which is actually a jam nut, is loose, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers and turn the center adjuster until your feeler gauge fits snug. You see me wiggling the feeler gauge right there. What I'm checking for is any kind of looseness and also checking the amount of tension that's on that feeler gauge. You should feel some tension, but when you wiggle it up and down like that, you shouldn't feel any slop or movement. Once you've checked that, tighten your jam nut back down on the adjuster and then make sure it's nice and tight. Once the jam nut is tight, you're gonna to want to take your feeler gauge and recheck your valve lash adjustment here. In this case, as I wiggle it up and down, I can feel that there's some slop because the gap is larger than this feeler gauge. The spec for these is 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters. So I'm using a 27 thousandths feeler gauge here and there's just a little bit of slop so we're gonna have to go in and adjust it. So here we are adjusting it a second time, loosen the adjuster back, put the gauge in, snug it up just a little bit and then tighten the nut down. Now you may have to do this more than once in this case with this valve, I ended up having to make this adjustment three times. After you've made the adjustment, it's basically the same across the other three valves and when you've adjusted all three valves, go ahead and turn the engine over three or four times to make sure that after you do that, your spec is still accurate so you don't have to come back and do this again. So again, there's the kind of the third adjustment with that first valve and it can be frustrating, but do it as many times as you need to do it to make sure that you get this feeler gauge to fit snugly. So there should be some tension, but not a ton. You should be able to slip the feeler gauge in and you should feel some tension as you wiggle it around. Always check, double check, and triple check your adjustment here. Make sure that it's right. Make sure that your jam nuts are locked down tight so they don't come loose while the engine's running. Remember, these things are moving. There's a lot of engine vibration that is acting upon these. So a good proper torque on the jam nut coming down is super important. The correct spec is super important. Over time, as valves wear, they get tighter as far as valve lash measurement goes. So if you had to fudge it one direction or the other, better to fudge a little loose versus a little too tight. Now you go too loose and it'll make noise and can damage the valves and the rocker arms. So really you just need to do it right. To adjust the exhaust rocker arms, there are two access plugs here on the back, 17 millimeter wrench gets those off pretty straightforward to get those apart. The challenge with these back exhaust adjusters is there is really limited access. So you can get these plugs out no problem, but then you've just got this little hole to work with to try to squeeze in and make your adjustments. The adjustment for the back here is the exact same as it is for the front. So the same concept of feeler gauge you know, measurement. There's a jam nut. You can see them right there. They're there, there is room to get in and do it, but it's really snug because of how small the access is. So feeler gauge to check it. I'm checking this first one here and the feeler gauge goes in and is snug. There's no excessive movement. So this one doesn't need any adjustment, surprisingly. Next, we're gonna move on to the second one and check it. This one is a little loose and needs to be adjusted. The trick to getting the feeler gauge into the spot that it needs to be is to come in from the side and kind of drop it in. This one, you really do need a 45 degree bend. To get this jam nut loose, you're gonna need a stubby 10 millimeter wrench and then to adjust the adjuster is kind of a challenge. I'm using a small pair of bent needle nose pliers to make the adjustment. And this is just a try, trial and error type of challenge that you gotta fight with. 
Once you've made and checked all of your adjustments, putting everything back together is just the reverse of disassembly. So that concludes the valve adjustment on the Raptor. It's pretty straightforward, but you definitely are gonna want these 45 degree angled feeler gauges. The ones I have here are available off Amazon. They're super cheap. I believe when I bought these, they were 10 bucks. The price might've gone up a little bit, but I will leave a link for those in the description below if you're interested in getting that. You could do it with a set of straight feeler gauges, but it's a lot easier with the 45s and they're cheap, so definitely worth picking up a pair if you're gonna go do this repair on your quad. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you did and found it helpful. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.